at 10.45 and so hopefully I make it to the flight but I'm so committed to being here that I'm risking not being able to make it in time and hearing a lot from my family but I'm really excited to be with a very close friend of mine, Vikas Bhai. Uh, we have been friends for a long time but we have had the good fortune of doing this kind of session together. Um, all of you guys know his brand, Apple, and I wanted to share something I saw um, during Ganpati, right? So I think, you know, like, I started a brand in 2016, and we would dream that one day D2C brands would be mainstream, right? And then at Ganpati, I visited like five, six Ganeshas, and in most of them, I saw next to the Ganesh, there is all this Mithai, etc. all that, and there was dry fruits in Hapiro packs, where the people had kept the Hapiro pack, and that's a beautiful feeling to see really in that time and that situation the brand has really become mainstream, right? So, um, I have a few questions for you actually and I have questions that I've spoken to other folks about as well. Um, look, these investors are really hard people to deal with, honestly. And uh, they ask these sort of random questions as well. So, I'm assuming that when you went and pitched to investors as well, investors said, Acha, brand is good, sale is but it's a commodity product because. So how can a brand be built in something that's a commodity product? And sort of, you probably face this, you probably had these conversations, still maybe at some point have these conversations. So, you know, DTC founders, when they go to investors, they get this, are you marketplace brand hai? Are you brand meaning hai? Are commodity product? So how does one as a founder really answer such a question? Yeah, thanks, Ajit. Uh, I think uh, this question is being there, relevant for me since the day I started. I'm thankful for that question because I diluted less equity. Uh, because in the early stage, in the zero to one journey, nobody was giving, so I have no angel investors on board. So again, one to ten, I don't have any family friends on board. So ten to hundred, also I did alone, uh, we reached hundred crores of uh, you know, annual revenue uh, without having any investors on board because uh, because my investors didn't have trust. We have trust in our own ability, and we have made it happen. So once we touched hundred crores, we had massive interest. So, uh, to be honest, uh, I was used to do morning evening flights. Uh, uh, I am a resident of Bangalore. I used to fly to Mumbai, like take a six morning flight, uh, do three four hours building and come back in the night because I wanted to save on money and not spend on hotels, right? So, and yeah, those were the days. So and uh, then one thing happened, like keep on getting rejected again. Uh, it made my pitch stronger, uh, more refined. Now it's like you know I can pitch to any global investor also. And for the hundred crore, I think we had a lot of interest. Uh, fortunate enough to be having I mean, good great investors on board and raised a decent amount of capital. And uh, see, I personally believe every product is a commodity. You take a shampoo, you take a uh, water bottle, you take a biscuit for that matter. Uh, everything is commoditized. You just have to, you know, uh, crack a recipe, crack a brand, uh, ensure that you provide value to the customer. If there's no value, the customer doesn't see value in what you're selling. It doesn't, doesn't aspire uh, to consume your brands, then whatever you sell will not actually be useful. So I personally believe uh, it's all about the brand positioning what you create. And how you can convince the customer to actually buy your product is not something else. And the advantage for us was the market was unorganized. And we were the big, big, big market. Big market, and we were the first one to organize it. Still a big challenge ahead. Uh, uh, small, small interests keep coming in, but uh, the opportunity is great. Uh, but the biggest challenge is how do we take more share from the unorganized business? But and I think that, that that journey led to sort of a large brand that's now mainstream, it's synonymous with the category. And uh, you know, there are lots of conversations now about this buzzword omnichannel, right? In 2020, 21, everyone was like online only, online only, but now B2C Insider has organized Omnichannel Summit in Bombay as well, and everybody's thinking about offline and going into distribution. I was a massive failure in offline at Dr. Vedya's. We only did online because we failed offline, and I got scared to do it again, right? Offline and online, fortunately or unfortunately, has very different ways the business is built, different teams, different credit cycles, different ways to assess the um, performance of your team, etc. You do both channels, right? And you're strong on both channels. So, for an online brand going offline, some advice, some things that you guys did, and vice versa as well. How do the teams run differently? How do the business run differently? How do you think about it differently? See, when we started, we started very small, and we went to Big Basket for our first launch. So we are just, you know, thankful that platforms like Vipassan and Amazon exist. That's why brand can, uh, you know, like us can actually exist and thrive. Uh, but uh, the biggest motivation comes from scaling the offline business for us. Uh, we are available to around 20,000 stores in India. Uh, and we have largely started as an e-commerce brand. And in the last 3-4 uh, years, post the COVID, 
uh, it was a great enabler for you know boosting our e-commerce business. But as COVID started tapering off, you know, a lot of business came actually into the physical retail again. Uh, and modern trade was actually you know uh, falling away uh, due to unfortunate circumstances, cash flow crunch and everything. Where e-commerce took a lot of share from the modern trade market. But the GT never lost shine. Right? Still in India, 88-90% of the market actually is offline and coming from largely from the general trade stores. So that's where the revolution. They were lost time because in fact modern trade was shine and took away and lost a lot of you know, space to e-commerce. But largely GT business never was shine. It's still 80 90 percent of the business contribution. So still they are only fighting for the 10 percent piece. In fact, D2C maybe 1 percent of the piece. And I saw only Instagrams and the Googles becoming more richer. So I thought we should crack the offline channel and normally channel is the best way to do it. We have opened our own stores. We are only about 20,000 offline stores in India. And we also focus on selling a lot of products on marketplaces. For us, every channel where a potential customer can come is a channel to acquire a customer, we will be available to that. So we are not very dumb about only selling on our website. And also depends on category to category. Uh, we being a monthly basket uh, product, we don't want to be limited to our own website. We want to be there across every good commerce possibility, every marketplace, you know, every B2C channel, or every, every uh, Kirana stores, every modern trade, every last commerce. So you want to miss an opportunity. You go to an IRCTC, uh, any shutdown, these last happy is being served. You go to an airline, you fly Akasha, you fly any other airlines, you have uh, happy in the menu there. So we want to capitalize on every opportunity to sell. Sometimes uh, things might not work, but uh, if you don't try, you never know. One other thing I wanted to talk to you about is marketing, right? I think uh, brands have different stages, and at different stages you can use different levers, right? So obviously Happy does some of the coolest marketing, whether it's IPL or it's brand ambassador or it's um, presence on Shark Tank, etc. All of that, but that's what you did at scale, right? Now I always dreamt that I would have uh, an IPL team with my logo, but my brand had not reached that scale. That was relevant for me to do. Right? So can you walk us through, at the various stages of your brand, through the journey from 0 to 1, 1 to 10, 10 to 100, what marketing levers you used, what worked, what didn't work, and sort of hindsight, how would you have looked at it and you done it from today? Actually, uh, we just completed, this is our seventh anniversary week, right? so we just completed seven years. Uh, and uh, today we are typically aspiring to be a two thousand crore revenue brand in the next eight months. Uh, initially, in the first 100 crore revenue, we never aspired to do any ATM. Because it's easy to get a celebrity at paying like a 50 lakhs or a crore. But if you don't have a 5x budget to actually amplify that budget, there's no point in having a big celebrity. Just deep back on what that means. I know what it means, but just for everybody to understand. Uh, basically, you know, uh, if you assumingly, uh, like we have, we have Kiara Advani and Sadhguru Lothra both. Uh, we got a combo deal before they got married. And we kind of killed it. <laughs> and then they became a combo. <laughs> so we, we, kind of, we kind of manifested their marriage. <laughs> but you knew they were dating. <laughs> Kiara, Kiara, you don't even want to answer that. Kiara, don't be No, but you know, uh, uh, coming back to it, I think, you know, uh, both of them, when we actually brought a 100 crore revenue, and we had put 100 crore in the bank from our, from our first investor. Uh, without having capital in the bank, without having that marketing muscle to spend, there's no point in taking a phase. In taking a phase, at least you should be able to, if you're paying, say, 2 crore to them, at least you should have a 10 crore budget to amplify it on a uh, you know, newspaper or a TV medium or social media or even OTT channels for that. Wherever you can do targeted, segmented, and all because of the OTT advantage, there's no point in having a big celebrity. Just deep back on what that means. I know what it means, but just for everybody to understand. Uh, basically, you know, uh, if you assumingly, uh, like we have, we have Kiara Advani and Sadhguru Lothra both. Uh, we got a combo deal before they got married. And we kind of killed it. <laughs> and then they became a combo. <laughs> so we, we, kind of, we kind of manifested their marriage. <laughs> but you knew they were dating. Kiara, you don't want to answer that. Kiara, don't be questioned. No, but you know, uh, uh, Coming back to it, I think two, uh, two, four, both of them, when we actually brought a 100 crore revenue, and we had put 100 crore in the bank from our, from our first investor. Uh, without having capital in the bank, without having that marketing muscle to spend, there's no point in taking a phase. In taking a phase, at least you should be able to, if you're paying, say, 2 crore to them, at least you should have a 10 crore budget to amplify it on a uh, you know, newspaper or a TV medium or social media or even OTT channels for that. Wherever you can do targeted, segmented, and all because of the OTT advantage. I think uh, an interesting point you made there on Celebrity, right? I, I see a lot of early stage brands as well saying, I just need to get the celebrity and then my sales will increase. But really what I saw as well is that that person can be a catalyst, see, but cannot give you sales. It is always a catalyst. Uh, it is all about creating a perception. 
but the consumer will never buy a product just because you have an XYZ celebrity with you. The product has to have that uh, uh, power in the power in the you know consumptions or aspirations or usage value or you know some kind of boosting uh, attitude should be there. Just because you have a celebrity and you don't focus on product packaging, uh, placement, pricing, promotion, I don't think it will work. So basically everything has to come in place. Get the basics right first before you actually get a celebrity on board. And when you have decent funding, then only I, I think you should be able to. Or you are highly profitable and you, are, you, know, you can spend 10, 20 crores on ATN and that's where you actually have to get celebrity. And after you know, getting to celebrity on board, we actually sponsored uh, uh, RCB this year uh, uh, as their you know, uh, sponsors as well. Uh, so we had Virat Kohli to shoot with and it great, did great campaigns. We launched the Happy Happy Low Jingle as well. So I think it was fabulous for the team, for pull-off of the marketing team. And uh, that's how we were able to build that national presence and you know, national footprint across. And we are actually now uh, going international as well uh, on the team itself and uh, going global. I think uh, we are actually expanding to Middle East now and setting up our first base outside India. So I think uh, a very important part of what you do and what you just said is product. Right? Now, there are two types of products that you sell, if I am to just think about it. One is the standard sort of commodity chain. Already, already it's done. I think it was the bar song. Bars are open, guys. So, one is that, right? And then the other is the mixes you do, the flavored products you do, etc. As you think of your brand or as you thought of your brand, how do you think of this mix and how you want this mix to look? Because obviously with the latter, there is more margin to play with, but then you have to explain and educate customers on why they should consume. See, uh, see it has been a journey for us uh, in terms of learning on the product journey as well. Uh, you know, last year we innovated a lot of new products. We launched India's first dry fruit bar. It's actually 100% made of dry fruits and nothing else. No sugar and nothing in it, no oats. Well, I, I don't understand how people sell are made with oats. You know, there were no oats, Mosa so we are not, we are not, somebody who will eat oats for breakfast and dinner. I had to punish myself. So we got, <laughs> so we have an exception here. So but, you know, dry fruit bar is what, you know, it's an age-old wisdom, right? Nani would give a dry fruit bar, Garma Maa would give a dry fruit bar, Karishma would give a dry fruit bar. So, you know, that age-old wisdom came through. Karishma would give a dry fruit bar. <laughs> so, you know, everything marketing plays a role. Uh, if you see cashews for that matter, before cashews comes from India, nobody focused. If you have a cashew, you have a cholesterol, you have a plant based product, you have a cholesterol. Cashew is a cholesterol. It's similar to any nut for that matter, even almond for that matter. So, what do we do for education? How do we educate? Almond, California board has promoted very well. So it's all about education as well, because how you communicate the product. For us, we have decided that we will take the dry food industry and related snack products to the next level. That's why we launched the India's first dry food bar as well. In fact, now we have innovated something like almond butter. I think that uh, after that, we also have some almond butter. Okay. Okay. So it's again a chocolate version of a nut. How can we ensure that the kids consume more nuts? Because for them, raw nuts, plain nuts, doesn't you know, attract them. So we are innovating on products. We have dry food burfies now, and we have almond bitters. We have almond bitters with uh, no added sugar. We have dry food bars with completely no sugar. And a lot of innovations we keep doing. Obviously, that's the whole uh, motive. You know, how we can sell more value added products, and how we can sell more innovative products to the consumer. Whether sticking this for the brand works. I think last question I'll ask, and maybe we can open it up to the audience as well to ask their questions. Look, we are here at this global selling summit. We are talking about Indian brands going global. Um, and it's something that everybody's talking about. We've had few success stories, but I think a long way for us to go in terms of our brands really sort of scaling global markets, right? So two questions. One, what are you doing or how are you thinking about, let's say, your six function because you talked about that. Um, and the second thing, what does a brand need to keep in mind? Like, I, I know, for example, that when I think about brands going global, um, outside of yoga, Ayurveda, tea and spices, you have to have a world class product. It has to be a market beating product or market leading product. It has to have the quality in that's required in that market or even higher in that quality to sort of offset the players in that market. So talk to us about really how Happy Low is looking at going global and any insights you can share to all the founders here who really want to go global and take their brands. I will just take this question a little deeper. I'll tell you how I launched Happy Low. 
I was actually a gourmet retailer before this. I had ran retail, I founded a retail chain called the Sapi uh, Specialty Foods in Bangalore. I expanded to around 15 uh, stores, a mix of home and franchise stores. And we are selling a lot of gourmet products like, you know, maybe more into international, sugar-free cookies, snacks, and more like planters and palm gardens of the world from across the globe. The availability of this product was on the shelf. And that time the food safety books were not strong enough. A lot of products were getting imported in, uh, you know, Mumbai, uh, to the show, somebody was carrying, relabeled in profit market and being redistributed. But the, 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 uh, the any, uh, international brands never had focused on India. Because they always thought, you know, paying euros and, you know, US pay dollars, India will only pay euros because that too, very meager. We always, we always seek to value spend time directly. So, and the shelves were always empty for us. The shelves were always empty for us. So we thought, you know, that is what an opportunity, what I realized. So that was the insight when I, you know, within my retail days, I said, somebody from India can create an international brand with that impact, with a catchy name, with the, quality, with the quality, with the packaging, and with the right placement, and can work on the sales and distribution, can actually make it. Good. So that was the insights which came from my retail days. It was, uh, you know, creating uh, a brand and an international brand is not easy. And I always, when I used to travel to Gulf Food and all to experience different brands, the respect given to Indian brands was very less. You know, they uh, always used to prefer US and European brands and they always pri were priced maybe 2x than an Indian brand. It was a few perceptions because maybe our businesses have not done a great job. But it is uh, our duty as a community sitting out here that we create great ultra products without compromising on quality and, you know, deliver great packaging and take the, you know, uh, nation forward in terms of brand and the brand in which what you can build the international stores. Mm. I think very, very important for us to create that right benchmark and do the right things every day, day in, day out. And globally, I think we have the world to win. And this next 10 years definitely belongs to India. And hopefully by doing the right things, building on communities, thanks to events like these, hopefully the next entire, uh, the century will belong to so, so I think because why I said it, uh, the message is very clear. There is an opportunity, but with the opportunity, we need to be world class. We need to make world beating high quality products that make Indian products not seem mediocre or lesser than US and European products. And I think we have brands doing it. Um, so the bar is high, but we are able to sort of reach that bar. And I think events like these and sort of conversations like these with so many folks in the audience, hopefully the next time we're here, many of you will be having this conversation with hundreds of thousands of other brands. So thank you so much, GTC Insider, for organizing this. Thank you for having us. I think Vikas Bhai and I are here. If you have a few questions, then it's, um, yeah, thank you so much for, for hosting us today. Guys, we have time for one question, right? And then we can take it offline as well. Right? Sure, so one question from Abhishek Shah. He's not allowed. He's not allowed. He's really wanting to ask a question. He's not qualified to ask a question. I part. He's an insider. <laughs> no, but what we learned today is that Badam Khan is a Karishma Kapunan Thayadar. I actually didn't know that. I didn't know that. He would be the only thing. Really, but he's true. And that's true, right? During our dad would bring up, he was told, exam me achi number laane, to paas badam roj khaane. That I heard, but I didn't know Karishma Kapunan. Okay, one question guys. And it cannot be a wish. Yes, sir. Okay, so you set the bar of what you are saying. Yes. Thank you so much guys for coming. Thank you so much guys for being here. Thank you guys for coming. 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 Thank you guys for coming.